like to call to order the Tuesday, May 21st, 2019 Sheboygan County Board of Supervisors meeting. Certification of compliance with the open meeting law. Thank you, John. Pledge of Allegiance. Roll call. There are 25 supervisors present. Thank you. Consideration of memorial resolution, resolution number one. Regarding honoring the life of former County Board Supervisor Dale T. Carey. Whereas former County Board Supervisor Dale T. Carey passed away on January 22, 2019, and whereas Mr. Carey served as County Board Supervisor for eight years from 2004 to 2012, serving on the Agricultural and Land Conservation, Human and uh, Health and Human Services, Health Care Center committees during his tenure, and whereas Mr. Carey also served as community as Dairy Project Leader for the Spring Valley 4-H Club, Secretary of the Alcart Lake Glen Beulah FFA Alumni, Trustee on the Village of Glen Beulah Board, and Parish Trustee at St. Fridolin Catholic Church in Glen Beulah, and whereas Mr. Carey will be remembered as providing policy oversight to the Health and Human Services Department, which contributed to healthy families and a healthy community and bringing a strong agricultural background to the board, helping to oversee the consolidation of the UW Extension with UW Sheboygan. Now, therefore, be it resolved that by passage of this resolution, the County Board herewith makes public its recognition of Mr. Carey's dedicated service to the citizens of the county and expresses its heartfelt sympathy to the family and friends and especially his wife, Ruth Carey, and his children, Brenda Peterson, Eric Carey, Adam Carey, Ellen Carey, and Paula Carey, be it further resolved that the clerk be directed to forward a copy of this resolution to Ruth Carey, Brenda Peterson, Eric Carey, Adam Carey, Ellen Carey, and Paula Carey, respectfully submitted this 21st day of May 2019. Pursuant to County Board Rule 2.13, this resolution will be on the floor for immediate action. So would the board members please join me in a standing vote of affirmation. Thank you. And if Ruth and either any other family members who wish to come forward, I'll give you the proclamation. I knew, I knew the Carries. actually, I just wanted to add, uh, thank you very much, I, I had all their children in school, so uh, and Dale is just a very kind person, that's what I think of Dale as, a, just a kind and gentle person, so thank you very much for coming and sorry for your loss.
Okay, approval of the April 16th, 2019 journal. Supervisor Glavin. Move to approve. Thank you, Supervisor Glavin. Supervisor Adler. I support that motion. Thank you, Supervisor Adler. Any discussion or questions? Okay, seeing no lights, please push your I or nay button. Motions moved. Uh, motions approved unanimously. <clears throat> That's why we're a team effort here. Yeah. That's why we're a team effort. That's okay. Okay. Consideration appointment by chairperson to County Board Gerald Jorgensen of Sheboygan. Uh, just add a well. While well, we get a motion on the floor, Supervisor Gehring. Mr. Chairman, I move to concur with the nomination with the appointment. Thank you, Supervisor Gehring. Supervisor Wegeman. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I will second that motion. Thank you, Supervisor Wegeman. Um, just point of information, um, Jerry's an outstanding candidate in my opinion. He really did a great job. Um, had one other inquiry and then the person in all honesty didn't follow through, never, you know, did an initial thing and then uh, stopped going forward with it. But um, Jerry's a wonderful thing and I just mentioned while we're at it too, um, it's later on, it's on the Finance Committee which the, he said, excuse me, Executive Committee uh, supported my nomination. Normally, I don't appoint somebody to the Finance Committee, but he's an ex-banker. Uh, I think he really has a lot of strong financial background. Um, he worked on the LF, RLF for the Town of Sheboygan, and we're very much involved in that. Um, also, very frankly, our committees are functioning very well, and they create a whole bunch of dominoes to do it for the last 10 months, so I feel that uh, Jerry would have a, a good spot on our Finance Committee. So just wanted to explain that to everybody. So. Okay, any discussion on the appointment of Jerry to our uh, county board to replace Greg Wegeman? Seeing none, please push your I or nay button. Motion is approved unanimously. <clears throat> Thank you very much. And Jerry is seated back there, so Jerry, if you want to just stand up and maybe give a wave or whatever to everybody. He is our new Come county board supervisor. Thank you, John, and congratulations, Jerry. We will see you tomorrow, too. Um, <laughs> see what you're getting into. <laughs> what you say? What's your getting into? <laughs> I'm not worried. I'm not worried. Trust me. <laughs> okay, consideration appointment by executive committee to the finance committee. Gerald Jorgensen of Sheboygan. Okay, I need a motion to that effect. Uh, Supervisor Glavin. Move to approve. Thank you, Supervisor Glavin. Supervisor Gehring. I will support. Thank you, Supervisor Gehring. Any questions or discussion? Seeing no lights, please push your I or nay button with the confirmation. Motion is 
motion is approved unanimously. Thank you very much for both those votes. Uh, consideration of appointments by the county administrator. Communications Council, a new appointment, Eric Bushman. Reappointments, Chrissy DeBlay, Blaine Werner, Daniel Altas, Steve Steinert, Chris Lewinsky, and Dave Scheibel. And Human and Health and Human Services Committee, a reappointment, Larry Samet. Without objection, I'll take a motion to approve all of them unless there is somebody who wants to divide it. Supervisor Epping. Uh, thank you, Chairman Wagner. I will make the motion to uh, approve all the said appointment. Thank you, Supervisor Epping. Supervisor Wegeman. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'll second that motion. Thank you, Supervisor Wegeman. Any discussion or questions? Okay, seeing no lights, please push your I or nay button. Motion is approved unanimously. Thank you. Presentations. Sarah Targison, 4-H Youth Development Director and 4-H Ambassadors for a 4-H Youth Development Impact Report. <coughs> Hi, my name is Rhonda Oppenheimer and I am a 4-H ambassador. Um, I am not a 4-H alumni. Growing up, I was not involved in 4-H, but I sure wish I had been. I am also a proud 4-H mom of the two sitting over there in the green. Um, I'm here to give you a parent's perspective of 4-H. I am the proud mama of Luke 14 and Emily 12. We have been participating in 4-H for about seven years. A friend encouraged me to bring the kids to a meeting just to try it out. Um, the selling point for me was what she said, you can do as little or as much as you want. My husband works second shift, so it's always a challenge for us deciding what activities the kids can join while not spreading our time too thin or my taxi service too long. Needless to say, I have become a 4-H cheerleader. My son is involved in about five different projects and my daughter about 10. If you ask my kids what they like about 4-H, they would say having fun with their friends, but it's so much more than that. It's helped them both grow and evolve into mature, upstanding citizens, though I may be a little biased. Um, it's allowed them to be exposed to different ideas, hobbies, and even job opportunities for the future. It's given them role models and examples of the best kind of behavior and the best kind of kindness. Growing up, I was not exposed to a lot of community service or volunteering. 4-H has allowed us as a family to participate in the food bank of Sheboygan, ringing the bell for the Salvation Army, singing Christmas carols at nursing homes, donating for toys for tots, and so much more. And they enjoy doing it. They also have been able to make financial decisions with their club and give money that they fundraised for to various individuals and organizations. My son Luke will be a freshman next fall, hard to believe. I really think 4-H has helped him be prepared for high school and beyond. Luke was a shy, introverted boy and I have watched 4-H transform him to a young man comfortable to talking to adults in nearly any situation and though it's not his favorite to talk in front of an audience. He's comfortable in his own skin, not something every 14-year-old can claim. And I think 4-H has played a huge role in this. He's been involved in 4-H ambassadors where proper public speaking is encouraged and practiced. His involvement, involvement in 4-H club meetings has made him comfortable voicing his opinions in a safe, non-judgmental non environment and helped him to become familiar with office positions, voting, and parliamentary procedure. He has been able to try out a lot of activities that we may not otherwise have financial access to, some he didn't enjoy, and others he continues to love, both in and out of 4-H, like 4-H Band and the Archery Project. Last year, Luke attended his first away from home camp, outpost camp in the Apostle Islands area. It took a bit of encouragement and maybe a bit of bribing, but he took a leap of faith and jumped out of his comfort zone to attend. He had a blast making lifetime memories. He can't wait to go again to camp this year at Peninsula State Park. He has now become a role model and example to younger generations of 4-Hers. Emily is my outgoing, vibrant daughter. Thankfully, 4-H has given her an outlet for her energy and enthusiasm. 
She has had amazing teachers and role models throughout her 4-H adventures. She loves theater, and there are tons of opportunities for her in 4-H, like the Music and Drama Festival, Communications Art Festival, and skits at camp and at her club, just to name a few. She loves music, baking, cooking, crocheting, sewing, arts and crafts, and 4-H offers all of these things and more. She loves to make new friends, and going to camp and leadership retreats has allowed her to expand her circle to include friends from all over the state good quality friends that are held to a higher standard. It seems 4-H breeds respect, courtesy, kindness, and leadership. Their motto is, after all, making the best better. Did I say that right? Yes. Okay, good. I always get it wrong. <laughs> um, Emily has been exposed to so many adults willing to donate their time and talents to these 4-H kids, and I know she strives to be that kind of an adult when she grows up. She is often found teaching her friends at school something she learned at 4-H or inviting one of them to try 4-H out. The community service and outreach that we participate in through 4-H really appeals to her kind nature. She is always looking for ways to reach out to others and lend a helping hand. I truly believe 4-H has been instrumental in shaping that. My husband and I are just regular parents doing the best we can to raise our kids with the time, money, and energy that we have. 4-H has allowed a whole new chapter be to, to be written in the story of my kids' childhood. Countless times and in various situations, people have asked me if my kids are involved in 4-H. When I answer the affirmative, so often people will say, it shows. And it really, really does. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so we shook it up a little bit this year and gave you a parent perspective on 4-H um, rather than that clover bud perspective, but we've got clover bud stories galore, so come and talk to me about them and I'll share, you, share and connect you with some of those young people. Today I wanted to share 10 things that you may not know about Sheboygan County 4-H. We have a lot of things that are going on that are unique to our county um, and uh, just wanted to share a few of those things with you. So first of all, we send about 25 projects, so like tangible projects, and about 50 to 60 youth who perform music and drama and 30 or more kids with their animals to the Wisconsin State Fair. So that's almost 100 um, young people represented from Sheboygan County at the Wisconsin State Fair. Number nine, there are 90 plus projects. So crocheting, sewing, all of those that were mentioned, all of those that you maybe have on the tips of your minds, and so many more. And it's actually unlimited if you consider that we have a project called Self-Determined, and that's where you just kind of decide what it is you want to learn and grow and do. Um, so really, the, it's unlimited. Through 4-H, you can travel to Madison, Atlanta, Georgia, Washington, D.C., Huntington, Alabama, New York, and all the way up that East Coast and into Canada, Korea, Japan, Norway, and many, many other international travel opportunities. Um, we have young people every year that take advantage of each of these travel opportunities. And so um, lots of uh, global perspectives going on there. 75% of our membership does not live on farms. So it's only about between 20 to 25% that actually live on um, functioning farms here in Sheboygan County. And there's a lot of reasons for that, but um, we actually have about 20% that live in the, city of in the city of Sheboygan. And so if you're thinking 4-H is just out in those other parts of the county, um, in those rural parts, uh, it's changing. The, the face of 4-H is definitely um, changing with it. Um, we own 60 acres, not we. The Sheboygan County 4-H Leaders Association owns 60 acres in Hingham, Wisconsin. It's called 4-H Camp Riversite. It's a beautiful piece of land. It has deciduous pine forest, wetland. Um, we're going to be restoring some of the prairie um, and uh, uh, some of the different habitat there. It's got 
right along the Onion River. And so it's a beautiful piece of land that we have ample opportunities for education at. We have young people in shooting sports. I know uh, Luke was downstairs and representing the archery project. Archery and air rifle are two shooting sports pro projects that we have going on here. And we have young people every year that compete nationally at the shooting sports competition. We also send uh, young people from the horse, the dairy, and the poultry teams to national events um, pretty regularly. We have a club in or very near to every one of the 28 municipalities in Sheboygan County. Um, we certainly have members in all of those munis municipalities that come to our clubs. We have the only blacksmithing project in the state. Very unique, very um, uh, so unique source of pride for us here. Um, we have many young people that uh, meet their um, planning their projects right now and then in June they'll come together and do a hammer in. Um, we borrow uh, from UMBA, I'm not sure exactly what that stands for, but it's a black smithing association and they have a learning trailer and they let us b borrow their forges and that kind of thing and then we have some materials ourselves, um, but a very um, a uh, crafted group of men and women that help those young people do some blacksmithing, very unique. Our top projects are not animal projects, not even in the top five. The top project is photography, Celebrate Art is second, Foods and Nutrition is third, Archery is fourth, Drawing and Painting is fifth, and then we have Legos and woodworking, and our first animal shows up in eighth place. Anybody want to guess what it is? It's not sheep. It's not dogs. It's not horses. It's small, and it says, well, I don't know. That was, it's a poultry project. So uh, chickens and turkeys and ducks and geese and Could you all try of that? them. Could you try oh, that again? That was good. Did you get that in the minutes? That's what I want to know. <laughs> All right, and lastly, uh, we are one of the largest programs in the state. We have 832 members and 279 enrolled leaders and many other parents uh, that make things happen every day. Um, just uh, hundreds of volunteers that come together to help influence the lives of young people in a positive way. And we want to thank you for the uh, support that you offer our program and offer Extension. Um, we are definitely proud of it, and we hope that you can be proud of it as well. So thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Sarah, for all that you do for the youth of this county. Next, John. All right, we have Kristen Blanchard Stern, CEO of Lakeshore Community Health Care Clinic. Really, I, I'm too short to stand behind this. <laughs> you won't see me, and I'll feel like I don't see you either. So I'm going to stand to the side, and if you can't hear me, let me know. So um, thank you, everybody. Uh, I am Kristen Stearns. I am the CEO of Lakeshore Community Healthcare, and I'm excited to say that as of June, I will be there six years, and we will have been in this community seven years. And in those seven years, we've done some amazing things. And so let me tell you from the beginning how we got started, and actually... You all helped us start, if you didn't know that, and weren't on the county board at that point in time. It was an initial, I want to say $60,000 that the county board designated to Lakeshore Community Healthcare to put in two dental laboratories um, at our clinic to upgrade the dental laboratories we had that weren't working on our North A Street site, which was the former uh, Dr. Kellner's former office that he uh, so kindly rented us for, it might have been like a dollar a month at that point in time, I have to say. I think maybe it was a little more, but he was very gracious to have us. June 2012, we opened our doors with primary dental, medical, and behavioral health care to serve Sheboygan County. <clears throat> to really, our goal is to alleviate barriers of access to care and to make sure that people in our community 
have, have that quality access by eliminating barriers like financial barriers, transportation barriers, uh, interpretation barriers, and just the barriers of life. And we, in my world, call it social determinants of health. Things like, I don't have enough food on my table, I don't have uh, money to pay my gas bill, and how can all those things really impact our overall health in our community? At that point in time, and I had to go quickly go back, but that first year, if I was presenting to you, we would have served about 1,200 individuals here in Sheboygan County. Seven years later, between Sheboygan and Manitowoc counties, because we have a clinic up there, we've now officially served over 13,000 people between both counties. I will say Sheboygan has beaten up, up, out, out Manitowoc. Uh, we've served here about 9,500 community members across all cities within our community, our county. During those seven years of, of being in existence, uh, we've gone from a $653,000 federal grant to a $1.6 million federal grant. I think that first year, um, we probably were about at a $900,000 operating budget, and today we're at a $12 million operating budget. When we first started this clinic, I had, we had 25 employees, one of them not being me, a dentist, a nurse practitioner, part-time by the way, a therapist. Uh, we contracted eight hours a week with Aurora Healthcare for, for a, a chief medical officer. You actually have to have one of those to run a clinic, just so you know. Uh, he showed up uh, a, couple hours, a couple hours a week for us. And, and Purveya, we contracted for a part-time, one-day-a-week uh, uh, provider. Today, we have officially uh, 108 staff members between both of our communities here in Sheboygan. I have seven full-time dentists, six and a half full-time hygienists, about 20 dental assistants. Through that clinic alone, our dental clinic, we're seeing between 70 and 80 patients a day here in Sheboygan County that have access to care issues. Uh, last year, um, we ha saw 6,258 individual patients in our dental clinic, 17,883 encounters. We're busy. Our medical clinic, again, that part-time nurse practitioner, half-time, one-day-a-week provider, uh, has turned into Dr. Wemberg, our chief medical officer, coming on board full-time for us, which is great. We have two full-time nurse practitioners, and one of those nurse practitioners, I'm excited to say, is actually will be finishing up her degree, and she'll be a psychiatric nurse practitioner to help us with our, with our uh, behavioral health, mental health uh, cases within our clinic. In our medical department, um, I think maybe we saw like, I don't know, I feel like 100 patients, if that, that first year. Um, last year, we saw 1,970 patients, 5,210 encounters. We're really making an impact in, in providing that primary medical home for people who don't need it. And let me tell you how that impacts all of you and your constituents, because they're not going into the emergency rooms anymore uh, to get that care, but they're actually using Lakeshore as their primary medical home. So we can treat them for their diabetes, their hypertension. Uh, we can really focus on their mental health issues and give them what they need so that we can really create a good system of care within this community. And behavioral health, which is definitely something uh, that's needed, and I know that um, in working with the county, um, uh, we talk about mental health, we talk about suicide rate, we talk about um, the, the increase in, in access and what we need to do for it, and I know that through um, the department and through the uh, Health and Human Service Committee is that what I, is that right? I, 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 uh, uh, you guys have designated some dollars towards improving mental health in our community through the PATH program, and so we are one of two agencies providing mental health in the schools this year. And we're in the city, 
Uh, it's where we, we do best as Lakeshore because of, uh, again, that uh, really focusing on that under and uninsured population that we do. And this year, starting with this, this school year, which is our first year, we were able to serve 103 students in the Sheboygan Area School District. We are only seeing those kids in high school and middle school right now. And I only have two staff doing that. I probably have another 100 people on a waiting list and next year we'll be adding on a third, potentially fourth and fifth therapist to help with that. From that 103 students, we saw 764 encounters. So that's how many times they came to have therapy sessions. We know that the, the impact that this is having on kids is such a huge thing. And what it does is it eliminates that stigma for kids to get the help that they need. And when we see a rising number of folks in our community, especially those teenagers, um, and the increase in suicides within that age group, this is really important and something that I appreciate you guys focusing on as a need within our community. We also do school-based dental program, and through there we saw 904 kids last year, uh, 1,523 encounters. Just so you know, we go into the schools and we provide full restorative dentistry, just like you get at your dentist. So they get a, they get a cleaning, they see the hygienist get a cleaning, they get x-rays done right at school, our dentist looks at the x-rays, and if they need a filling or a baby root canal or a tooth pull, we will do that right then and there. No parent is leaving work. The kids don't have the anxiety that we all have by going to the dentist. Just so you know, we give that to our children once in a while. But we're, they're back in the classroom. They have, they've missed a half of a class or a class, and that's it. No, again, no parent leaving work, no driving back and forth, no taking all the kids out of school, and so it's really impactful for us. Just to kind of get an idea again, um, back when we first started, uh, all those years ago, um, I don't think we could picture where we are today in a brand new clinic on Seaman Avenue. Uh, I, we have pharmacy and chiropractic added. <coughs> Uh, which again, as we look at health outcomes, is a huge piece of what we're doing that really impacts our health outcomes. Because of the type of organization we are, and because we can do 340B pharmacy, I'm able to supply uninsured folks with diabetic medication for 30 days for $15 to $25. If you would get that from Walgreens, it would be $800 to $1,000. Again, how do we get people out of the emergency rooms and into primary care so we can treat them the way that we need to? About 90% uh, of our patients are at or below 200% of the federal poverty level. 59% uh, of those are on Medicaid, about 10% on Medicare. We have 15% that are insured commercially. Just so you know, we have a lot of folks in this community that have high deductible insurance plans that are at or below 200% of the federal poverty level that we can provide discounted care to. It's such an important thing. We need to get people into primary care. Your constituents, when they call you and say, I need health care, please look to us as that health home for them, because that's what we want to be. We do serve the community at large, so any of you are welcome to be served at our community health center. I get served by our community health center. It, it's a community health center for that reason, but again, we really focus on that under and uninsured. So I want to thank you again for all your support over the past seven years, uh, especially the Health and Human Service Committee, because you guys have been to our clinic, you've learned about what we're doing, um, you've taken an interest in who we are, and I, and I appreciate that, and you understand the partnerships that we have uh, with your Department of Health and Human Services and the impact we're making on the community. I'm gonna do one little side thing. If you're not vaccinated for the measles, please get your vaccination. They're coming. I'm just saying, it's coming up. Chicago, we're very close. Please get vaccinated if you don't remember. Um, but again, thank you very much for having me. I am happy to answer any questions and you all have brochures at your places. Um, and if you ever wanna reach out, please do so. So thanks, Seattle, thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you, Kristen. Public addresses. We have none. 
Letters, communications, and announcements. We have two. One resolution from Polk County Board of Supervisors in support of a comprehensive response to methamphetamine and opioid addiction. Refer that to the Health and Human Services Committee. And next, uh, repeat, we have a resolution from Buffalo County Board of Supervisors regarding nonpartisan redistricting plans. We'll receive that for information. That is all. Thank you, John. <clears throat> County Administrator's Report. I'll keep it relatively short and sweet because we're going to spend a good part of tomorrow together at the County Board Leadership Forum. But as Kristen departs, I just want to say thank you to Kristen Blanchard Stearns. It's all about collaboration, partnership, and the leadership she has provided for this health care center has been stellar. Uh, we're fellow Rotarians, and I don't care who I run into, they all think so highly of Kristen. Uh, thank you for your good work, Kristen. It's just remarkable. So I appreciate you being here tonight. And of course, our, our extension and our 4 hers got out of here while they had the opportunity. I don't blame them. But I want to thank them for uh, giving us some treats tonight. And if you're not aware of it, uh, in addition to supporting our youth through 4-H, uh, Extension also has a Youth Government Day here and a number of our department heads, some of which that are in the room tonight, participate. And they bring students in from all the schools across the county to learn more about your roles and responsibilities, our roles and responsibilities. And it's well done. Both Extension and our Legionnaires have been doing that now for 35, 40 years. And uh, we receive good feedback on that as well. Uh, could we put up the slide? Since our last county board meeting on April 16th, there's been a few things going on in our community. And this was a terrific day. Uh, the board got highly engaged with raising awareness about the importance of 23 and in fact our transportation director Greg Schnell was very engaged with this groundbreaking. We brought over the soil, we brought over the equipment, we brought over the shovels, we did a lot to coordinate with the good folks at the Wade House but it was, though it was rainy, it did not dampen our spirits. We were absolutely thrilled to finally turn ground for Highway 23. You see uh, Chairman Wagner there and our senators and Governor Evers in the middle and what was kind of endearing about Governor Evers uh, presentation before we broke ground was he talked about his parents both residing at Rocky Knoll and I think he said for seven years he traveled Highway 23 every couple weeks back and forth to visit them. He, he actually, his, his dad used to work there as the medical director so he's very familiar with that facility and so he was also very familiar with Highway 23. Of course, all of our legislators, Craig Thompson, Secretary Craig Thompson on the left there. You'll see Alan Beekle, the county executive from Fond du Lac on the far left. Uh, everyone pulled together. But uh, the board, to use, I think, Sarah's comments earlier, we should take some collective pride in being part of this process and continuing to beat the drum and make sure that it wasn't out of sight, out of mind. Uh, I see our one and lone sole media representative, Emmett Feldner, here today. Emmett wrote a number of editorials and helped keep some pressure on over time to just raise the importance of this. And for those of you who have driven it just in the last week or two, you'll see that trees are being cut down and ground is being moved. So it was a good day. And just a quick snapshot, if someone asks, this is a 19.1 mile stretch. Work has begun. It'll be done in three segments, starting in Plymouth toward Fond du Lac, and it should conclude in 2022. So we're going to see some activity here for a while, but because it's a four lane, the two lanes that we're all used to using now, though you better be a little bit more careful about your speed, will continue to be open as uh, progress ensues. So it's a very good thing. Also, since our last county board meeting, the Finance Committee heard this the other day, but Rocky Knoll uh, was once again identified as a five-star nursing home. Well, we come to expect quality care. We expect to give the best services that we can to our parents and grandparents and family members in this community. But if you didn't get a chance to see it in the paper or the email that we sent out from our office, we are the only five-star quality facility in Sheboygan County. We're the only one. And that doesn't happen by accident. That happens because of support from the board, our health care centers committee, the leadership at Rocky Knoll, Kayla and her team, and of course our outstanding caregivers, our nurses, our CNAs, everyone that works there. Uh, we are very proud 
of Rocky Knoll and our staff and the good work that's done there. And of course, this five-star rating means that the facility ranks much above average compared to any nursing homes nationwide. And the reason that uh, Medicare and Medicaid Services put this together is so people can go online and compare and contrast. And we encourage people to do it because Rocky Knoll's doing good work. We heard some, uh, received some good news last week. The National Association of Counties, which you're all very familiar with, have just recognized Sheboygan County for two prestigious awards. We're going to receive an Amsterdam Dunes Preservation Area and Wetland Mitigation recognition in the category of Community and Economic Development, as well as the Sheboygan River Harbor Cleanup and Restoration Project. So we're gonna receive some national recognition and the spotlight's gonna be on Sheboygan County for the good work, again, thanks to outstanding leadership and collaboration board supported it, our community supported it, and folks like Aaron Brault and others supported it, and it's wonderful. The state budget is in play, certainly uh, I'm sure many of you are following that. It's like watching sausage, I think, be made. It, it isn't real uh, pretty to, uh, to observe, and it certainly tests, tests your patience. I think one of the key messages we should collectively continue to send to our legislators is under your watch, especially having three members in the Joint Finance Committee, no more unfunded or underfunded state mandates. Not one. And we should all be comfortable sending that message and having respectful conversations with our area legislators as well as any legislator. When you have one size fits all net new construction caps in place that we know is not sufficient to maintain the programs and services we have today. How can you as state government pass on additional mandates that aren't fully funded? It's highly irresponsible and it's just plain wrong. And I think we're all fooling ourselves if we think they're gonna go back and, and make right on the un, unfunded or underfunded mandates of the past. It's not gonna happen. But going forward, it shouldn't happen, and we have three legislators from our area on the Joint Finance Committee that should be able to make sure it doesn't happen. Uh, please respectfully uh, remind them of that and other legislators as you run into them. Many of you have very close relationships. Devin Lemieux is a member of the county board, Terry Kotzma, local government, known both of them for years. Um, I'm, I'm looking for them to lead and make sure that we don't see more of that come our way. Wendy's been working very digital, diligently with the department heads and her staff on the five-year capital plan. Finance takes the lead in pulling that together. I've been uh, meeting with Wendy and some department heads on that. We'll learn more about that tomorrow at County Board Leadership Forum. The 2020 budget process we'll discuss at length tomorrow during the County Board Leadership Forum. And then, of course, you all should have received the agenda from Elaine. We're going to go over our, for our newest member of the County Board, we're going to be going over our financial history, outlook, challenges, how the budget process is looking for 2020. Uh, Kyle Christensen, the WC Director of Government Affairs is gonna be there to give an update on the state biennial budget. We're gonna have a presentation from Bernie Vitrone, the Director of Criminal Justice Treatment Services from Outagamie County, looking at alternatives to incarceration. And then we're gonna have a number of quick updates. Crystal Fieber is gonna talk about open meeting law. Uh, Lane and I are gonna give a little update on our Detention Center Study Oversight Committee. Matt Stripmotter is going to give an update on child welfare. Greg Schnell will be there to talk about our customs facility, the airport enhancements, as well as our transportation system and capital equipment needs. So it's going to be a good day. And finally, would Chairman Wagner and Vice Chairman Koch join me, as well as County Board Supervisor Greg Wagner. I give Chairman Wagner credit because when Greg announced that he was going to move on to other challenges, uh, Tom was very uh, efficient about uh, making sure we got notice out there and identified a new candidate. And of course the county board supported that tonight. So we're gonna have a very smooth transition. So my compliments to Tom and everyone. But tonight we just wanted to share a few words about Greg and there are a few new board members. 
Uh, just a little background, you know, Supervisor Greg Wegeman was appointed to the county board in August of 2010. How time flies. He was filling the vacancy then of Supervisor Mick Annick. Mick Annick, as you may recall, was very helpful in the Sheboygan River Harbor and bringing attention to that from the federal government. Thereafter, Greg was elected every term. As a member of the Finance Committee since 2010, Greg served as the Finance Com Committee Chairman for two consecutive terms and right now Vice Chair of the Finance Committee. He has been a key contributor to maintaining our strong fiscal track record, developing the annual budget, and really provided beneficial insight on a number of investments that the county makes to uh, get the best interest rates that we can. Greg has also served on the Human Resources Committee. He was there from 2014 to 2016, and he jumped right in. He helped lead and oversee the countywide all-employee compensation study. That was a huge challenge for us, and the HR Committee was a big part of it. We updated the county policies and procedures countywide, and we implemented a new pay-for-performance system. These were major initiatives and changes, and Supervisor Wegeman was a big part of it. During county board finance and, and HR committee meetings, and I'm sure you share this, I've always appreciated that Greg never hesitates to ask the tough questions. He's not afraid to challenge the status quo. He's not afraid to weigh in on a matter, whether it's popular or not. And that has served us well. And many of you are like that. We need that. We have to challenge the status quo. We have to be continuing to improve. As a fellow Rotarian, I have known Greg now for nearly 20 years and really got to know him the best, the eight plus years that he's been on the county board, but I've, I've always admired him. He's very busy, like all of us, but I've seen him time and time again step up and get involved to help others and make our community even a better place. He is a strong and thoughtful leader with a good heart and good intentions. And as I said, without question, he has provided tremendous value to our organization. So please join Chairman Wagner and Vice Chairman Koch and I in recognizing Supervisor Wagaman. And I did ask the current chair of the Finance Committee for some input on the plaque we're gonna give Greg tonight. And it reads something like this, an appreciation for eight plus years of dedicated service to Sheboygan County. You are the second best vice chairman we've ever had on the Finance Committee. No, no, no. Greg, thank you so much for your leadership. I asked the chair um, if I could make a few comments, and I told him I'd keep it under an hour. So um, we have full attendance. I've rarely seen that. Somebody next to me said, uh, they know you're leaving. Yeah, so. <laughs> but uh, I, when I was appointed to this um, almost 10 years ago by Chair Vandersteen, um, I, you know, being a numbers guy, I thought, well, um, and a fiscal conservative, I, I thought I'd come in and find a lot of waste and inefficiency and help the taxpayers. And what I found pleasantly was just the opposite. I found a pretty well-run organization that really watches its expenses. And more importantly, you had department heads that really care about the taxpayers and want to do well, but are also held accountable, um, unlike a lot of levels of government. And, and I, I found an organization that people work together, they, they see a problem and they work to solve it. You don't have the pettiness and the partisanship and all the other crap that you're seeing going on in this country at the state and federal levels. And I think it's kind of refreshing and I think a lot of people in this county um, don't realize this, um, don't appreciate it. Um, but uh, I've been proud to be on this board. And I've had a lot of um, interesting times and met a lot of interesting people I wouldn't have gotten to meet otherwise. And um, think hopefully I've, I've made the county a little better place. Um, but um, it'll be bittersweet to leave. But you know, um, you have an excellent replacement in Jerry, who I've known for a long time. He'll, he'll be very good. And uh, you know, 
Ken Conger, a uh, long time ago, Ken and I knew one another, and, and Ken was an interesting guy for those of you that didn't know him from when he was on the county board. He actually represented our district for quite a while. And, and Ken had the attitude, um, basically, you couldn't pay me enough to take this job. Um, so um, I'm going to do whatever I think is best. And if you think you can do a better job, I'll sign your nominating papers. And, and I remembered that, and he, he told me that. And, uh, and that's pretty much the attitude I've had. <laughs> um, and uh, um, it's not like this job pays real well. <laughs> um, so you're, if you're doing this job, it's for other reasons. And uh, I've... I've really enjoyed it. I've enjoyed working with everyone here, and uh, I know the county's in good hands. We got excellent leadership. We got a great board, and we're going to be up for some of the challenges ahead. The most frustrating part is is the state, and as Adam talked about, the unfunded mandates just it drives you crazy, um, and some of the other things that they impose on us that we have little or no control over, like the state pension and a few other things. So. And that we can't do anything about. All we can do is control what we can control. So anyhow, thank you very much. And as Supervisor Wegeman takes his chair, I'd be remiss without uh, pointing out his better half. Lisa, his wife, is with us tonight. Lisa, would you just stand and be recognized? Thanks for your support that you've given Greg all these years. Thank you, Adam. And best wishes, Greg. Thanks for all your service. Okay, consideration of committee reports. Executive Committee, Ordinance Number One. Regarding amending Shoreland Ordinance, Town of Mosul, recommendation to enact. Supervisor Gehring. Thank you, Supervisor Gehring. Supervisor Damp. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I will second that. Thank you, Supervisor Damp. Questions or comments? Uh, Supervisor Baumgart. Uh, thank you very much, uh, um, Just a couple comments about the uh, development uh, of the chapel along the, uh, the lake shore. Certainly, the chapel is always welcome and probably a few chapel and uh, chapel along the, the lake shore. Just a couple comments. if we lose a, a certain amount of the bluff. Still very safe uh, situation, but um, I, I just, uh, they did a good job. I just uh, didn't like to see wetlands destroyed when they could have been left, but then they couldn't have had the chapel where they wanted, to, and they wanted the chapel as close to the lake as possible, and that would be certainly uh, important to uh, uh, the people that, uh, we're having uh, uh, activities there to come into the chapel and then uh, see the Great Lake Michigan. But um, I just worry that uh, we didn't maybe look at the, uh, 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 the bluffs as closely as we could. Uh, I'm going to support the, uh, um, uh, the uh, uh, proposal, but 
I, I, I don't do it excitingly, but I think they did a good job and deserve that credit. But uh, we do have those bluffs that keep eating away, and we need to be uh, more careful than uh, maybe we are, are in this case. Thank you. Thank you, Supervisor Baumgart. Any other questions or comments? Any other questions or comments? Okay, seeing no lights, if you please push your I or nay button. <clears throat> Motion's approved, 24 ayes and one abstention. Thank you very much. Now I'll turn the gavel over to the vice chair. Resolutions introduced. Resolution number two from the Finance Committee. Regarding designating the Sheboygan County Memorial Airport as a U.S. Customs Service user fee airport. Resolution number two will be sent to the Executive Committee. Resolution number three from the Human Resource Committee. Regarding approving corporate partnership program with Concordia University. Resolution number three will be sent to the Executive Committee. Ordinances introduced. Ordinance number two from the Finance Committee. Regarding changing supervisory district boundaries to reflect annexation in the City of Plymouth. Ordinance number two will be sent to the Executive Committee and we are up for adjournment. Supervisor Bemis. I move we adjourn. Thank you, Supervisor Bemis. Supervisor Glavin. Second. Thank you, Supervisor Glavin. Please vote.